What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Sound of Tech once again. Today, we're going to look at the mining performance for the R9 Fury Nano. I haven't seen much out there about it, so I wanted to get that covered for y'all. I do realize that on the used market, it's quite expensive, and so it might not be viable until the used market comes back to reality, I guess I'll call it. So stick around. Welcome back. The R9 Fury Nano is one of the first cards to use HBM memory. This means that yes, it is similar to Vega and especially on CryptoNote, which you'll see here in just a second. But before we get to that, let's talk about the card itself. There aren't very many third party, actually any third party cooling options for this particular card. So you're going to be stuck with a single fan design that sports an eight pin power adapter pulling anywhere from, once again, about 80 watts to 150 watts, depending on which algo you're gonna choose to go with. The single fan gets the job done, albeit mediocrely, not fantastic or anything like that. And you can take a listen to it right now. Welcome back. So relatively quiet compared to some other options. Of course, definitely more quiet than the Founders Edition or Frontier Edition stock reference coolers or just the reference coolers for RX 56 or NVIDIA uh, 1080 Ti's or 1080's or 1070's. So it does have a little bit of a better sound in my personal opinion. It is a little bit quieter than the rest of the reference style coolers. So all good there. But how does it perform in mining? Let's talk about it. Starting things off, we have Vertcoin. And if you guys didn't hear yet, there's a new accelerated AMD miner for Vertcoin and you can check it out up here. Using that particular miner, we see a 39 mega hash a second at 288 watts, peaking out at 73 degrees Celsius. I am super happy that we have an AMD optimized miner. There are a few issues with it, including being pretty restrictive on which pools you can mine. And of course, also it has a dev fee that's kind of hidden and not very explicit. So that's kind of a bummer as well. Other than that, moving on to Kryptonite or XMR Monero, for example, we're looking at 855 hash a second at 253 watts at 73 degrees Celsius. The important thing to note here is that I actually use the latest beta miner from Claymore, which is 10.2. I didn't actually dive into using the XMR stack miner because as I started messing with it, I couldn't really get the numbers that I was seeing reported for the Fury cards. And what I came to find out is that as soon as I got the latest Claymore, I took the hash rate from 750 to 850 pretty easily and dropped power consumption. So if you're gonna be using Fury, definitely swap from the AMD stack miner to the Claymore. Now that's gonna be completely reverse if you're talking about using Vega for Kryptonite and you're gonna to wanna to use the XMR stack miner instead. So just a few things we get to learn from testing all these cards. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Moving on to Equihash, this is just, there's, in my humble opinion, there's no reason to even try Equihash with this card. First of all, first of all, you're going to have to downgrade the driver from the latest drivers to, or even the blockchain drivers don't work with Fury on this particular algorithm, all the way back to 16.3.2, which has already some stability issues and it's just not going to work otherwise. I've tried multiple different avenues of getting this to work and you usually just end up with zero souls. So that's a super big bummer. If you do drop down drivers to 16.3.2, you can get 217 souls at 271 watts, and then it maxes out at 74 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of where we're at as far as the Equihash algo. I think if you're gonna go Equihash, just avoid Fury in general, so there you go. Finally, we have ET Hash, Ethereum, one of the most popular ones, of course, and these cards have always been kind of notorious for being at least okay at them. And we see that it pulls 27 mega hash a second stock with 280 watts at 74 degrees Celsius. So 
definitely trading blows there. Of course, I think that the new miner for Vertcoin makes that quite appealing right now, at least with the current prices of Vertcoin and etc. So that might be something you want to look into. It's going to be purely up to you. Of course, I just supply the numbers for you guys to make the best decisions that you possibly can. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Oh, I should mention that you can overclock this if you flash the BIOS and you can do this pretty easily just like you would in the RX 580 video that I did over here on how to flash it. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday. Don't forget about coins.sonofatech.com and come join us in Discord.